Hey, great show. Chuck Ocelli just proceeded with uh, my friend James and Pending and Mark Hill called in. Way to go, Mark. Um, really some thought-provoking conversation. And Dodie from Before the First Cut is with me tonight. Welcome, Dodie. Hi there, Vince. Hey, good to talk to you again today. How are you? I'm good, but this is the third third time we've talked today. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I was listening to you and Wendy this morning, and you guys really covered the uh, background of uh, what what's where it started and how it's moved through at the uh, Benz Ranch. So I left there a week ago Friday, and I see I see how the things fell apart around there. So I thought you and I would talk about that, and uh, I would interject uh, along the way. While you're uh, giving the background of uh, my observations, I was there for a good part of two weeks, and uh, um, I think I have a pretty good perspective, at least on the surface. Let, let me let me just put it that way. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm I was looking back into it, and the the BLM has been doing some atrocious things to these ranchers on the land in Nevada. I mean, as as far as breaking into their homes and and stealing their cattle, and I mean, this isn't about Bundy. This is about the the since nineteen I think ninety four is um well. Let me read part of this. Every month, Raymond Yoel, the eighty four year old former chief of the Shoshone Indian Tribe in northeastern Nevada has almost $200 garnished from his 1150 Social Security check, and it all dates back to a 5 a.m. phone call on a Friday morning in 2002. That morning, a government official from the Bureau of Land Management told him to come down to a seizure site where the 132 cattle he owned were about to be impounded. When he arrived, men brandishing handguns told him he couldn't get any closer than 250 yards from his cattle. He watched from a distance as the government loaded the livestock onto stock trailers. Within a week, the cattle had been sold at a private auction for what Yowl estimated to be a quarter of their market value. The proceeds belonging to BLM, officials told him, paying a portion of the grazing fees he suddenly owed. It wasn't enough to cover the full debt, and the BLM sent Yol a bill for $180,000. Now, Yol has been fighting this in court for 20 years, people, and to this date, they are still taking money from his check every month. And, and that's just one of them. I mean, there was another one, um, and she was a congresswoman, and they took her land. But it all started in 1994. Clinton Interior Secretary Bruce Babbitt rushed through a total overhaul of the cattle, sheep, grazing regulations, over 260 million acres of land that was managed by the BLM and the Agricultural Department's U.S. Forest Service, the Washington Post reported. The 1994 rangeland reform regulations, including doubling the current fees charged to ranchers for public foliage and further environmental rules to prevent overgrazing. Opponents noted that in the run-up to the new regulations, the National Academy of Scientists uh, gave sci- the word that the, these agencies go for their scientific, uh, you know, put on, on it. Uh, they said um, the agencies rely on expert uh, analysis from these scientists, had issued a report concluding so so little was known about the condition of the U.S. rangelands that the new standards were essentially a shot in the dark. But Babbitt forged ahead anyway. And it, it's a long article, and I'll put the link in for you guys, but it goes back to where they even took a congresswoman's land um, and then they took, they wouldn't renew her grazing, uh, permit. And then they cut off her water rights and fenced in all the water on their land, on the land so that her cattle couldn't get to it. Her and her husband fought it for over 20 years. They died seven years ago and just about a week ago, their kids finally, they settled it. And 
now get it. It went in front of a, a district, a lower district judge. It says last May, the jur- the district court judge Robert Jones ruled that the government and the agents on uh, the government in the locale, sometimes in the seventies and eighties, entered into a conspiracy. A literal international conspiracy to deprive the hags of not only their permit grazing rights for whatever reason, but also to deprive them of their vested property rights under the takings clause. And I find that's a sufficient basis to hold that there is irreparable harm if, if I don't restrain the government from continuing in conduct, in this conduct. The judge found the government's demands for trespassing and damages from innocent ranchers to be adher- adherent to the court and I express on record my offensive my own conscience in that conduct that's that's not just simply following the law and pursuing your management's right it evidences an actual intent to destroy their water rights to get them off public lands Jones went further and accused federal government personnel of racketeering under the federal RICO, uh, that's the Racketeer Influenced and Corruption Organization statute, and accused them of extortion, mail fraud, and fraud in an attempt to kill the business of Mr. Haig. And you know what gets me? Is then it went to the Supreme Court and they vote, they ruled him down. They, they, they went against his ruling completely. So what do we have the Supreme Court for? You know, I mean, those are some pretty stiff charges for uh, a judge to come across and say, you know, I mean, ra- and that's been going on since 1994. So really, I don't feel this is about the about Bundy at all. It's about these corrupt, evil people coming in. And taking and destroying families. And you can fight in the court system for years and years, but where do you get? Like, like, uh, that poor gentleman, 84 years old, and they're still taking money out of his monthly check every month. Right. So, you know, know, uh, and and Bundy, you know, he's been in battle for, uh, you know, about 20 years in this legal thing here. And, um, you know, he's basically concluded that, you know, what you said, they're trying to run them out of business, and, and they're doing the very same thing uh, to him. Well, okay, I moved my phone. Uh, uh-huh. <clears throat> so, you know, a lot of people have a, a lot of uh, things to say about what's happened out there. And some agree and disagree, but uh, as you and I were talking earlier, um, I, I think we really, as a whole, missed a really good place to take a stand at. You know, it was the first time in history we were able to Mm -hmm. uh, really say, look, you know, we're we're standing, we're standing in the gap and literally standing in the gap down there in that wash under that overpass. Um, People said no. We should have been there shoulder to shoulder. Yeah. Right. But, Um, you know, and it's sad in, in our movement that we preach every day. Together, we have to unite. We, well, where's the line that we can unite on? Because all I've heard is bickering just to, like the mainstream media. And it's all about Bundy's a bigot, Bundy's this, Bundy's that. It's not about Bundy, people. It's about we had a chance. When they backed down, we had a chance to say we've had enough. Not just about Bundy, not just about this, but about all the corruption that you are doing and putting on us when you're supposed to represent us. Exactly, huh? And the uh, the sheriff Gillespie of Clark County, he came up there that Saturday morning here, some near three weeks ago. I guess it's been now. And uh, <laughs> I was up on stage, my Forrest Gump moment. <laughs> it was awesome. I, I, want to, I want to tell that story just a little bit. How I got up on stage. But I'm all over the AP photos from the Washington Times and New York and all, all over in this video. So, <laughs> and the UCY.TV sign on Fox. <laughs> I loved it. Hey, hey. I, <laughs> but I'm here. Uh, I'm in Arizona now and I have uh, satellite internet. Man, I wish I'd have had that there. That would be cool. So anyways, I've got a motorhome now to be fixing this year. And, uh, yeah, so I look forward to, uh, doing some mobile. That will be really cool. 
Um, <clears throat> there is a couple of guys there. So, that I gotta, so tell us about your experience there. Okay. Well, yeah. first, uh, I'd like to shout out, go to my Facebook page and, uh, you'll find, uh, Tom and, uh, um, Jason Patrick, um, their links. They're, I, I'm not sure what their status is right now, but they really embedded out there, man. Those guys were really hardcore. It's like, you know, how we see these, uh, you know, reporters that embed over in, you know, the wars overseas and stuff. And it's like, these really embedded, man. I mean, um, uh, Roughing it and uh, getting the getting the truth truth out there. So uh, my kudos go to them and also PM Bears. She's been back and forth out there. She has done an awesome job. So uh, my vote goes to those three for uh, best coverage at the Bundy, and uh, then I will by default take number four in position. <laughs> and yeah, I got on. Uh, I got to uh, ask some questions uh, here last week, uh, which. I think aired pretty much across the, uh, there was a lot of networks out there after the race thing came up and, uh, channel 13 interview I gave. I, I said that, uh, I, I believe the use of words is, is sometimes owned by a region or an era and time and, and uh, referred to that as my, uh, myself using the word icebox instead of refrigerator. So he said Negro. Okay. So. That's what people back in the day called uh, black folks. I say black. I, am I supposed to say African American? You know, it's all the semantics and the mainstream. They pulled it out and they just they went with that and they slammed it and they. But look, uh, I was there. There were uh, there were black people out there as brothers, arm in arm with these other militia. Um, at, at the very beginning, there was people from all walks of life. You know, and they wasn't. Uh, it wasn't about, you know, God and guns. It included all rights. I mean, my, uh, my cousin, uh, well, I said my cousin, he's my, uh, my cousin's, uh, husband, but anyways, uh, count him his blood. He was out there, man. He had all like 90, uh, or I guess it was a World War I, uh, five clip, uh, carbine, you know. He went out there to stand, you know, and, um, people of different beliefs were there, and it wasn't isolated. And I saw it went all the way. And you know, there's there's uh there's very few guys left there now. I'd say, you know, at a guess, I bet you there's no more than twenty at the most, and maybe less than that now this past week. But it looked to me like people were uh, in there and and using some of the same old tricks, emotion, like Pete Santilli. Now uh, that dude, man, I I first saw him. I didn't know who he was when I first got there. I got um, on that Friday. I was up all night and all that next Saturday, which brings me, I'll interrupt them and go with this story. This is how he ended up on stage <clears throat> up there. Um, Ammon had overheard me talking to another guy about two or three o'clock in the morning outside his trailer. And he came out and uh, he introduced himself and he said, look, I've been uh, listening to you talking. And he says, I just feel like, you know, I can trust you. I think he really just was of heavy heart. And just really needed to share with somebody. And uh, uh, he let me in on what was going on that the, uh, you know, uh, Clive and Bundy would not talk to the sheriff. He's going to have to come up on stage. But they already spilled it over the sheriff did. And, you know, look, we're going to pull out Lottie Daw, all this and that, trying to, uh, you know, get everybody to go home. But now it's my opinion somebody really was behind the scenes stirring him. And, uh, <clears throat> I think Pete Santilli was definitely part of stirring the pot. I, I don't think you know, anybody would have been there had he not called out uh, his, his influence. But uh, good or bad, some people may or may not agree one way or another. Um, I, I think overall, overall, like you, you know, we're saying that it was a it was really a missed opportunity for all of us to really uh, take that final stand. I mean, just not the final stand, but that that first stand, you know. Um, and then the next time they wanted to go against somebody and govern by a point of a gun, then, uh, Michelle Fiore, that's, uh, thanks. Big shout out to her. I think she kind of distanced herself. She's running for assemblywoman here in Nevada. I think district four, if I'm not mistaken, but, um, hold on a sec. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, there were a lot of people there, uh, some people that were moving around. I, I just I read body language and people so well. Pete Santilli, <clears throat> before I knew who he was, 
he looked like a worm. And uh, there was a couple other people. And then I, I spoke with people that were kind of fronting as, uh, you know, up there. One gal in particular, um, she, I think she was just trying to maybe show off like she was, you know, had, you know, bigger position and stuff. But she worked at a correction facility, and she said that without saying it. She stopped herself while I was talking to her. I didn't bother airing a lot of uh, stuff it, it, to me when it turned out to be look like I was <clears throat> ambushing somebody or something like 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 Jerry uh, forget his last name who was in charge of the militia. I believe they disposed or deposed him, and they called us the, caused a split and they threw the oath keepers out. Supposedly, this guy I've got his name written down somewhere. Anyways, he was going around. Uh, acting like liaison and he'd come to me and I was all like, uh, Hey, kick it, dude. Yeah. And, uh, I was smoking a joint. I passed it to him. He's like, he hits a joint and, you know, we, we talk a little bit and talk and, you know, Hey, yeah, we'd like to get this kid Anon on here. Uh, you know, get him over here and get some support from Ann on it. I, I, I hope I'm wrong. But it, and if I am wrong, uh, or yeah, if I'm wrong, dude, I apologize, uh, for calling you this, but you appear to me to be a, uh, an agitator there. And I'm quite certain there had to been several, you know. <clears throat> I found myself examining, scrutinizing uh, people's motives. So, uh, just looking real close. We had one old man up there that was, you know, illegals get the hell out button on his shirt. And just, uh, that, but I, I I had to, you know, kind of back up and, and re-examine him. You know, too, he he's, comes from this era and he's got the, the same stuff pumped in his head and you know, people take different camps, and, you know, it's so... A lot of people do not realize the uh, that we, the unity that we need to take and set aside our differences and, and take a stand for true freedom. So uh, I believe uh, a lot of people are, are missing. So, so, Vince, what you're saying is, like, in the beginning, it was all, like, they knew what the purpose was, and they were together on it. But then as time started going on they started what bickering amongst each other like or or you know trying to agitate each other well um i'm not uh what it, it wasn't just so obvious or anything there was uh there were some moves that were being made i think they were trying to maybe close ranks i i kind of stood in scrutiny of that guy jerry but you know reconsidering and looking at him and uh i kind of uh seen the loss of uh, that stand on high, you know, from talking to him previous and then, then again afterwards. Uh, and I do have his number, so um, I intend to do some follow-up. I have several people's number that uh, <clears throat> I would like to go back uh, next week and get it set up that uh, we can get um, some first-hand accounts from some of the people up there in, in the top. But, so, you know, I can only guess. I, I really I hate to make accusations, but this guy... Um, he comes in and uh, then come back with agitation towards the, this anonymous kid and um, says, look, man, you can't be around here smoking pot and stuff and body slam guy and kicked him out of camp. And so anyway, see through with me now. I'm in, oh, by the way, I'm in the White Hills of Arizona broadcasting from satellite internet radio to UCY.TV. Yeah, about 60 miles from Vegas. I can see the lights of Vegas and Laughlin and some other little spots of light out in the desert. Is it windy? Yeah. It's Is windy. it windy there? It's uh -huh. usually windy. How many feet up are we? 35. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 3,500. I, I made a good guess. I said 36 is what my guess was. So, <clears throat> it's really pretty up there. A lot of, uh, a lot of cactus and, uh, Joshua trees. Yeah, my ranch was in high desert, and it's really beautiful. I mean, we got snow and everything, but the desert, man, when it's in bloom, it's just awesome. So, uh, but uh, the only thing I didn't like was the wind. Huh. The wind, constantly yeah. the wind. Hi, Anon ninety five thirty four. Yes, we are alive. Welcome. <clears throat> so uh, let's get back into the timeline then uh, of the Bundys. Study. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I, oh. Let me finish first. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, after talking to 
uh, Ammon, he's like, uh, well, he let me in on a little information. Then he asked for some help getting stuff set up. And <clears throat> here, here's my contribution I made is that we needed a amplifier and speakers and microphone on stage for the press conference at 9 a.m. <clears throat> and Ammon said, can, uh, can you do that for me? And I said, uh, let me see what I can do. So, <clears throat> excuse me. I catch uh, Pete Santilli and I said, hey, Pete. I said, uh, look, man, I said, I need an amp, speakers, and a mic up here and a podium up on stage. I said, can you help me out? He says, uh, who are you? I said, oh, I'm in, uh, asked if I could get it done. I figured, hey, man, you're the guy for this, right? I said, uh, can you do that? And he says, you got a truck? And I said, who's got a truck? And somebody threw the keys and away he went and made it happen. So, <laughs> uh, yes, I am <laughs> living my first Gump moment. Thank you, Victor, my brother. He named it that for me. <laughs> yeah. And, a public service announcement, announcement at this time. It is uh, uh, 422 somewhere. So if you miss 420, it will be that again in 24 hours. <laughs> I didn't miss. So. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Joel. Awesome. So, yes, we are on uh, UCY.TV. It's uh, awesome being here. I'm coming up on a year here. Uh, ooh. Wow. In uh, just over a week, I've been... Uh, uh, here with Jules, and she's built a fantastic uh, network here, and we've got a lot, a lot of great people that broadcast here. You are on before the first cup uh, in the morning, starting it out. Well, we got uh, actually uh, Prepper Chick starts with a rebroadcast, except for live on Tuesdays mornings. Uh, it's been a fun experience being here. Really, a, a lot of, of growth, I think, and uh, a great network for. Uh, we're, we're sharing the information with uh, quite a amount of uh, civil theory. Well, it's like Jules says, we're here. A lot of these things people hear about, but we're here to try and connect the dots for people, you know, try and get the whole picture out there instead of just like the mainstream media that gives you one slanted side. Okay, so that's, I guess I've, I've got myself up on stage, and uh, I'm filming up there. I have it on YouTube, so my YouTube channel, you can find me at What It Matters, Be Easily, or just search events and easily. You can probably find me that one, too. So I got a lot of good videos that the, up there, some interviews. Um, of course, you know, it's on a, a little old cricket phone, so, you know, don't expect a lot of great quality out of it. But, um I, you know, if if you're able to make it out there, I think we may be able to. I'd like to jump back out there if you get that way. But uh, <clears throat> I think if I unhook the satellite, I could take it. I get a, a satellite finder and take it out there and have uh, internet access on the spot. That would be wow. Cool. That would be so cool, you know? Yeah. So people could see what's really going on there with no bias or anything. Just you know, see the truth because. There's so many different angles to this. I mean, every time I look it up, there's one person saying one thing and one person saying another thing. And and it's according to what which one you hit, you know. And I, the, I don't know. It's it just, to me, this was an opportunity. We're always saying, you know, together, united, we can take care of things. And this was a great opportunity for us to really show that we can come together and have one purpose and, and stay strong. I, 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 I'm just afraid we missed it and it makes me kind of sad. Right. And, um, whatever your name is, three, the meanie anyways. Yeah. Some people said, you know, that, uh, Bundy is, uh, uh, I don't know. They, they, Put them in different categories of fundamentalist or whatever, or uh, association with that one guy uh, from the FLDS. Uh, you know, I haven't I haven't looked at any of that. Um, my opinion of uh, the people in Bunkerville and the Bundy family was is uh, you know they're God fearing. They have uh, like most people, uh, they have their bias on their view of life, and that uh, their view comes from uh, their faith in the LDS religion. So. You know, uh, I can't fault him there. Uh, you know, but to are, me, it wasn't about Bundy. 
They made it all about Bundy. You're right. But it was about the government overreach. It was about, you know, the government going in to just collect a bill with guns drawn and, and attacking citizens. I mean, that's what it was about to me. It could have been anyone's ranch. It just so happens that Bundy got the attention of the media and and gave us this opportunity and I mean, I've never seen the government back down before, and I don't think anyone else has. And this was when we should have realized the, how power we had and come together and supported the the issue. You know, that we got a chance here to stop them from coming in and destroying lives and, and just being corrupt and being really a gang, a gang of, of evil people with guns. And they're brave when they come up across someone that isn't armed. But you put some people with arms in there and ready, and they're not going to back down. And there's an opportunity there. Well, you know, uh, three at minimum, and here says research who you want to get behind, brother. Look, uh, you know, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's like you're saying, though, it was the uh, the event. And, that, and as far as I'm concerned, it was a, a, an event horizon that we could have all stood with and uh, put aside the differences of uh, and not make it about the man, but to make it about that event. And the next time it, it occurred unjustly, uh, we'd stand again for that person. And uh, uh, eventually people would say, you know, look, we don't have to uh, be governed by tyranny anymore. Right. And, you know, the the by the publicity and all, I was going to read this first part of this um, article by uh, Representative Chris Stewart of Utah said concerned about the armed agents that surrounded Nevada rancher Clive and Bundy's property is mulling a measure to cut funding for any paramilitary units that work for the Bureau of Land Management, the Internal Revenue Service and other federal regulatory agencies. There, there are lots of people who are really concerned when the BLM shows up with its own SWAT team, he said, and Salt Lake Tribune reported. They're regulatory agencies. They're not paramilitary units, and I think that concerns a lot of us. He molded a amendment to an appropriations bill comes in context of Recent BLM actions against Mr. Bundy. The federal agents armed themselves and surrounded his property, tasered his son, closed down road access to the ranch, and even shot a couple of his prized bulls. The reason? Mr. Bundy hadn't paid his grazing fees to the federal government, but rather fought the matter in court. Militia from all over the nation came to the ranch to support Mr. Bundy in his standoff with the BLM. And for that, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid labeled them domestic terrorists, various media reports. The BLM finally backed off and left, but not before a shocked nation expressed its outrage at the government's armed stance against a man who, at the root, was guilty of not paying a bill. Now, you know, that says a lot. And, you know, it, it's true. What are we doing allowing our government to come with guns to surround your home because you didn't pay a bill? I don't care how much the bill was. It's still a bill, you know, and you can put lien on his land, on his cattle, all this. But you don't go with guns and, and, and go up against unarmed people. And that's what shocked, you know. It, it, things like the things that Waco, a lot of it was hidden from the public. And if you didn't see the rules of engagement, you w wouldn't know about the things that were really going on. Well, you know, this could have ended up another Ruby Ridge or another Waco. It really could have if no one had been there to support him. You know, I ponder what uh, what's yet to come. And uh, like I said, I've been out of the loop this last week, uh, uh, so I really don't have too much idea what, what's happened this week. So uh, that's something I will be looking at, and uh, I, I want to get some people on here next week from up yonder. Yeah, 
Okay. Yeah, um, I'm hoping to go. I mean, we're still looking for the parts for my car, but if we get it, because like I said, I want to go there because I, then I have to go on to Texas. But I want to go see for myself. I want to, you know, like you said, I want to meet the people that dug in that are still there, you know, and and I don't know. I just feel like we're always talking about United, and here's a chance for the ones of us that are on the West Coast to do just that. And, and you know what? Uh, you don't have to go with a gun to, to go, so, uh, you know, stand in support. I would invite everybody from uh, every cause to go there with their signs and uh, say we just we stand in mm-hmm. defense of freedom from uh, you know any any aspect of society you know from GMOs and, and everything else in between you know on either side that is to uh, to come out and uh, you know make this a point you come by for for a day for an I hour know, I hate just- the weekend you know. Uh, yeah. People were rotating out there and standing shifts. Um, like I said, I don't, I don't know what the support is down to now, but <clears throat> I knew it was a bad idea when they started rounding everybody up into uh, the central camp, kind of uh, pulling in the the, uh, the uh, <clears throat> some of the people there. They were just as free people, and you know, come with their right to bear arms and said, "Well, you know, we're gonna we're gonna stand in the gap and." Uh, you know, I, I think there was a pressure kind of uh, for organization, and I disagreed with that. <clears throat> Still disagree with it, and I, and I think that's how it resulted in the uh, infighting. So the the infighting uh, that that led to a split. You know, people uh, drew lines, and uh, you know, there were several people that were asked to leave, and uh, <clears throat> Anon, like I said, he uh, he was. And, you know, he left under fear of, uh, of under force, you know, and fear. And uh, so <clears throat> that guy right there, he was definitely. What, do you think egos, egos started play, playing a part in it? The, their egos? It, it could be. And, you know, I might be wrong in trying to call some of these people uh, out on, you know, being uh, in, in there to tear it down. But, you know, you've got to realize that certainly the government sent their best psychologists in there that, you know, they're. Uh, best offer thieves, uh, your spooks or whatever, and went in there and uh, manipulated and managed the, uh, you know, the flow of uh, the whole deal, right? Just like they do on on with the media, you know, they get people to bickering at each other when really, if they they if they think about it, they're all there for the same reason. But they're allowing themselves to be drawn into this my side, your side, you know, thing. And and it's not supposed to be like that. That's the one thing we're always fighting. Democrats, Republicans, uh, you know, this religion, that religion. All of that should not even enter the picture. And I think in the beginning, it didn't. From what I've gathered. Yeah. Hey, uh, by the way, there are three Naman men in I can't say that. Why can't it? Men mean on? Okay, okay try and, again. Um, <laughs> I can't do it. Yeah, I was saying, Tilly, I, I think he, if he ain't an agent, he's missing a good chance for it. Yeah, he screamed down the, the press, man. Uh, uh, Antonio, oh, I forget his last name. Channel Channel 3 News guy interviewed me. You know, he was asking some legitimate questions, you know. Uh, you know, how Bud, Bundy stood on, you know, racism and, and so forth, and you know, he was pushing the envelope, and, uh, well, he should. I think uh, <clears throat> press has that obligation, not only duty, um, to ask some hard questions. Um, so then uh, P- Santilli. But that wasn't all. Yeah, but Santilli sh- shouts him down. To There's another guy. Hard. No, not at all. <clears throat> and another guy, he starts baiting, and then it's, uh, you know, boom, crowd mentality. Everybody, blah, blah, blah. And uh, shouting down the press, I seen I seen fear in old boy's eyes. Santilli, he jumps up like uh, <clears throat> man, and he's wearing uh, <laughs> he's wearing all camouflage, you know, and he's got the the uh, do rag on his head, camouflage, and he's all like flies off. I mean, in a rage. I mean, uh, <laughs> Antonio was like, wow, man, I this guy's going to jump on me or what? And then I think you got true fear. <clears throat> now there's been accusations that there's been nobody. 
uh, being stopped. And uh, they, they say that uh, there's been accusations by mainstream that people are being stopped by the militia and not uh, allowed uh, to traverse the uh, roads out there. But uh, I, I seen one guy, and that was, uh, I think, you know, well, a couple of weeks ago, when that happened, uh, I think he was kind of a little raged up or, or maybe just trying to, you know, be that provocateur because he did confront the uh, press and it was all like, y'all can't come down here and stuff. Like, you know, he did block them saying they can't come down a, uh, <clears throat> a public road there. So that did happen. <clears throat> I, I, I saw it happen. And, uh, well, I heard the BLM was, was uh, blocking people from going through, too. Well, that was yeah before uh, before I got there because I got there on a Friday and it was just like them a couple of few days before when uh, you know the the Bundy's son and the gal that was pregnant and the elderly woman were were knocked down, uh, tasered and uh, generally just uh, abused by uh, these jackbooted thugs. Why, by the way, are we uh, you know militarizing all these agencies? You know, IRS can come collecting debt from you at the point of a gun. BLM can come collect the debt of you at the point right. of a gun. Thank you, uh, Michelle. And, then, Ray, and those people win. were unarmed. Not everybody wasn't. Weren't, I mean, this happened. <laughs> no, but this was before the militia showed up, right? Wasn't it the day before? Right, yeah, beforehand. Yeah, before they when they were just there alone. And it was what had happened, why, uh, you know, they wanted to inspect. Expect this truck coming out of there. They come out of the hills up there with a backhoe, with a, uh, a dump truck, and uh, some, you know, several cars. And uh, it's all like, hey, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, that's uh, that's where I graze my cattle and water them. And, uh, you know, have you rustled some of my cattle? I'd like to have a look inside the back of that truck, if you please. And uh, <clears throat> so that's when that, that happened. Now, uh, what had occurred, actually, what they did up there, they did go up there, and they tore down some 100-year-old and older water holes, just uh, broke them open where they emptied, so the cows couldn't uh, water there. But in doing so, they also uh, cut out the um, the supply, the water supply, for all of those other animals that have been uh, watering there, from the lowliest insect on up to the uh, burrow and bighorn sheep and uh uh, the little jack rabbit and cottontail in between. So these guys are criminals, man. As far as like, uh, you know, criminal cruelty to animal gives you a good. Yeah, you know, anyone that can be that purposely cruel to animals, that tells you about their mentality. Right. Well, uh, if I can holler at hawk, desert hawk is out here in the desert with me, y'all, and. Uh, Look, here he comes, and what I've done is asked him to uh, talk about some batteries. So uh, he's made a list. We want to do some projects out here. Ought to be fun. Um, All right. Okay, here's Hawk on. Say hi, Hawk. Hello. Let's see if we can hear you. I got the mic on the other side. Can y'all hey. hear Hawk? Hello. Sit down. Go ahead. Sit down. Okay. There, I can hear him. Okay. 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 Got gotcha. you. Go ahead, Ben. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me move the mic over here. Closer, 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 closer. Okay. We do have the desert hawk in the hawk. Yes, that's me. In the desert. <laughs> here, here in the desert of White Hill. Nice to meet you. <laughs> you bet. You bet. I've listened to UCY for probably eight months or so. And I've been in, in chat a few times. Some fun yeah. times. Yeah. 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 Controversial <clears throat> on, on occasion. Yeah. I've seen not, you there. Not always, but I'm, we're going to build a spaceship. Uh, well, that's going to be a while. <laughs> but, uh, hey, that's I have Tesla's uh, plans. I have okay. Tesla's plans of when how he made his first spaceship. I hadn't heard that he made one, but I know he he knew a lot of stuff. Oh yeah. Hmm. No, well, he made he built him and um, Edwards built the first one, and I. Uh, through Doug uh, Yorgi, I've got the. He sent me the plans. I'll send them to you. It's fascinating. Oh, okay. Well, uh, Vince wanted me to talk about some batteries. Yeah, I think he was looking for uh, just some basic explanations of what batteries are and where they came from and things along those lines. 
And uh, so I figured I'd start out with uh, the, Bag- the Baghdad battery. And uh, I'm sure, ha- have you heard of that one? Just go ahead and explain. Okay. Yeah, the Baghdad no. battery, uh, it's, oh, geez, it's probably like 3,000 years old. And they find it in sediments and ruined cities. And it's, I, if memory serves, it's just a copper copper rod inside of a clay pot. And they'd fill it up with uh, lemon juice or whatever fruit juice they had around at the time. And uh, they had electricity. Because uh, what would happen is you'd get a, uh, you would get a, a galvanic.